I thought I would come outside this afternoon, sit in the shade, grab some seedlings that need to be potted up and just sit and have a little bit of a chat with you all. It's definitely feeling a lot like spring today, although I know it doesn't seem that hot, but it was 22 degrees, which felt warm for us around here. It's crazy that I say that because 22 used to be absolutely freezing cold when I lived in the subtropics, but now when the sun comes out and it's 22, it's actually a little bit warm. But yeah, it's definitely feeling like spring. I've noticed so many plants waking up, like some of the deciduous plants that I have in the garden, like the viburnum that I planted. Not that they're deciduous, but my fajoa trees have also been growing really quickly and have a lot more new shoots on them, which is amazing to see. And of course we have lots of flowers that are blooming it's just looking absolutely beautiful in the garden but it's definitely the busy season for us gardeners and i have been rummaging through my seed stash to figure out what i want to be planting this spring and i thought while i pot up some of these tomato seedlings i would chat through these um, and just a little bit of a different way of how i'm approaching growing food this season there will be some planting and actual gardening in this video so stay tuned for that but we'll have a little bit of a chat first go through these seeds and then plant some of these in the ground i've also got some beefsteak tomato seedlings here looking nice and healthy these need to be potted up as well as i have another batch over there which are a random seed that i saved not sure what kind of tomato but we're going to pot them up as well I'll show you quickly how I do this and then we will chat through some of the seeds. Right, just so you know what I'm doing, it's a bit hard with the camera angles, but basically I always like to up pot my tomatoes. So I plant the seeds all in one container first and then I separate them. This, this seed raising mix was super light and fluffy. So all I'm doing with this little tomato seedling is grabbing it out of the container digging a little hole in the potting mix this is just ordinary potting mix and and planting it in just like that you can see I buried it a little bit deeper because tomatoes they will grow roots outside of the stem here and potting up tomatoes like this just makes them a lot more sturdy plants so that's why I like to do that with my tomatoes something else that is also making it feel like spring is all of the wind around you'll probably hear it in a lot of my videos and it's making filming actually pretty difficult spring is generally really windy um, anywhere on the east coast we get a lot of the westerlies that come in uh, and that has been disrupting my filming quite a lot but we are making do with that I feel like there's always an element that uh, dominates each season and for spring around here apart from all of the rain and water that we've been having I feel like wind is generally pretty dominant in spring but yeah I really wanted to film a video today about food and how I'm kind of approaching it differently this year because of the flower farm and also we haven't prepped a lot of areas in the garden I don't have as much space as I usually had for growing lots of food and in previous years, because I'm still generally fairly new to gardening and trying different things, I've only been doing it on a larger scale for maybe like four years or so. So I was always trying different plants, trying different um, varieties of everything and just experimenting. This year, I'm definitely holding back on that because of the limited space that I have prepped for veggies and not uh, flowers, which is kind of the income part of um, and, and a part of my business and so I'm approaching it really differently in that I'm just minimizing a lot of the different varieties that I'm growing and really focusing this year on actually growing things that we are going to eat and I know that sounds a little bit silly because like wouldn't you do that anyway but uh, no I'm, I'm an experimenter I love to experiment I'm a scientist I love to try different things you know see how different things work but this year I need to hold back that part of me and and uh, just plant things that I know I've grown before and that I know can grow well. Granted, it's a different climate and different area, so I'm still kind of experimenting, but all of these plants, most of them, I've grown before and I really know how to grow them. So I'm going to be growing a little bit more 
of these plants and a little bit limited variety or number of different food plants basically. Right, I've finished with the beef steaks. I need to go and grab the other random tomatoes. I'll be back. Someone's just started using a uh, some kind of machine next door. Hopefully that's not picking up too much. But yeah, I know the temptation to just try so many new things is always there with gardeners. Like, I mean, those seed sites, they really get you. I, uh, I'm always finding myself just having a browse, which evidently turns into having a purchase. This year, I'm trying to be a little bit more strict. I also swear people are just obsessed with mowing their lawns around here. Like, I think it's actually a little bit of a problem. This is what I'm going to be planting over the next month or two. And all of these you can be planting in spring and summer if you're in a temperate climate. So I'm just going to like space these out over the next few months or so, but generally try to get a lot of these planted within the next month. I'm still saving things like zucchini, watermelon, pumpkins for probably another month or so, but these are going to be my focus of where I really want to be growing a good amount of this food because we generally eat the most of these things. So a lot of these seeds are from Jeff at Whitbird Environmental. He runs an Australian small business. I really love supporting small businesses and the packaging on these are just amazing. And there's so much information on his website as well. Him and I have been writing a lot of plant profiles on his website so that when you buy a packet of seeds, he's going to have some QR codes on the seed packet that'll take you to the website to give you a full article on how to grow the plant, which is just an awesome idea and just has so much information over there. So there's a discount code for these seeds if you would like to purchase some of those. I've always got that linked in the description. So the ones that I have here that I'm going to be planting, I have some dill. We eat a lot of dill and I'm also going to be planting Space Master Cucumber, which I'll be planting near the dill. And I'm just super keen for lots of cucumbers and lots of pickles this year. I have some more mustard greens. This is Scarlet Frills, just a really pretty plant as well. Uh, I've got some turnips. This is Purple Top Milan. I've got some Rocket, which is really just a staple um, for a lot of cooking. It's just such a great uh, green to grow in your garden. Pak choy, you all know I love, love pak choy. Little gem lettuce. I have been obsessed with eating sweet potato salads lately, which is basically just sweet potato, quinoa, lettuce, red onion, and hummus. Best salad ever, and I'm going through a lot of lettuce right now, so I need some more in the garden. And I also have some red oak leaf lettuce to kind of have a little bit of a mix of lettuce. A lot of these greens I'm going to be planting uh, today in an area behind the shed. I didn't do peas this year or snap peas, but I am going to be prioritizing a lot of areas for bush beans. They're probably hands down one of my favorites to grow. So I have strike and royal burgundy that I'm growing. Tomatoes is where I have a little bit of a problem, um, as do a lot of us gardeners. Yeah, a few too many. This is where I really can't hold back, but I am going to be holding back in that I'm not going to be planting a lot of these. I have a lot of these beefsteak and random tomatoes here, but that's just because I'll probably just give a lot of these away. I say that now, I'm probably going to end up doing that with all of the other varieties, but tomatoes just make me so excited. So make sure you're also just growing things that make you excited. And if you grow a few too many of something, that's okay. I feel like you need some play, obviously, when you're growing food. Uh, just to keep it all fun. With tomatoes, I'm growing Gros Lis. This is one of my favorite tomatoes. I'm going to be growing two different varieties in pots. One of that is Patio Supreme, and the other is Totem. And then the other varieties I have, I have Yellow Pear, Thai Pink Egg, another one of my favorites and Roma, which is going to be a staple in uh, one that I would like to do a lot of preserving of. And then I just have some capsicums, mainly just some sweet capsicums and uh, Californian Wonder, as well as Black Beauty and the Golden Zucchini and jalapenos as well. So that is all I'm gonna be pulling out of my uh, seed stash for now, which might seem like a lot, and of course it is, but it's what we eat. We are predominantly vegetarian or pescatarian because we do eat fish, um, whatever you wanna call it, but we eat a lot of vegetables and I would like to grow as many vegetables as I can. So I think it's going to be a little difficult to really hold back, um, but I will keep you updated with how I go with that little journey of trying to hold back and not plant everything. 
I don't know if I'm going to be growing corn again this year. Uh, we actually still have some in the freezer from last year. So that's kind of saying like, mm, are we eating that enough? I don't know. I would have liked to have grown potatoes and carrots, but I don't think our soil is ready for that just yet. So I'm just going to be focusing on these varieties here with some pumpkins and watermelons thrown in but it's just a little bit too early to plant those now. Right, that is two rows of the tomatoes propagated. I'm going to give these a bit of a drink and then head over to one of the garden beds and then choose some of these seeds to finally get in the ground and so we can start having lots of fresh food this season. So something that I'm going to be trying this year is growing in more of like one square meter blocks or blocks of food. Still using permaculture principles in that I want a lot of diversity around the garden, lots of flowers uh, to bring in that biodiversity. But I also want to be really productive with the food that I'm growing, like I want a lot of food. So the way I can manage that a little bit more in my head is to do it more in blocks. So the first thing that I'm going to be planting today, if I have enough seeds, we'll see how I go, is some um, turnips. I might actually mix these with some rocket just because I'm not sure if I'm going to have enough seeds all of this area but yeah I am behind the shed here next to some of the garden beds that I had originally intended were going to be for flowers but I think I want this to be like my veggie patch area I'll probably still have a few flowers planted around here but I think I think I'm gonna make it generally veggies and then on the other side of the shed I have another area that's also going to be for greens because that area gets morning sun and afternoon shade which is what greens generally prefer so i'm going to turn you around and we are going to plant some seeds Turns out I do have enough seeds to do four rows of turnips. Turnips are one of those crops that are really quick. They, what does the packet say? They, you can harvest them between three and six weeks, which is amazing. And because they're not a really um, deep rooted vegetable, they're a great crop for uh, sowing into no dig beds to be the first kind of crop that comes up because they will slightly break up the soil a little bit, but they're not going to be really stunted like uh, like potatoes and carrots would be in this situation. So they're also going to help act as a green manure and just cover the soil here and provide really quick growth to get this bed working for spring. And then I can plant something after it like tomatoes or something like that because by the time these are ready the tomatoes will probably be right to plant in this area. I'm sowing them fairly thickly and I'll just thin them as they come up just to make sure that I get good germination throughout the whole row and that it's not too patchy because like most root vegetables they really don't transplant easily. Uh, that's also why I'm planting these directly into the ground. I wouldn't want to buy turnips as transplants and then plant them. They are best sown direct into the ground. The soil is pretty moist in this area so I don't really need to water it but I will make sure that it's kept moist over the next few days as they germinate. But yeah, I think they'll be really great in that little corner. I will just have to protect them from the bandicoot before we get the fence in which is this weekend's job. But yeah, I think I'll go plant some rocket and some of the other greens in the other area.
So this is the other area that I was talking about. Really nice and protected from all of the afternoon sun and it's going to be perfect to plant greens around here. In this area for today, all I'm just going to be planting is some rocket and lettuce just to get that going and then I'll plant the rest um, as we kind of get our fences in place. So I have some little gem lettuce that I will plant in this area as well as the rocket obviously. Probably just do two rows of each and that will be enough for this area. And yeah hopefully this little patch here which is just another no dig bed with cardboard or compost will be a really nice productive area for us and just be really simple for me to have an area where I'm growing greens so that I can have a little salad patch and I'll also probably incorporate some of these into the cottage garden because I like the way it looks but for productivity this is going to be this area I think. So I'm just making sure to push the mulch away so that the seeds have direct contact with the soil um, so then they'll find a little groove and be able to germinate. The mulch on top will be a little bit too hard for these seeds to germinate in. Same story with Rocket, I'm just going to quickly sow this and then I'll thin it as needed. But to be honest you don't always need to thin Rocket because I usually just chop it all off and then it grows back. So, so really the more the merrier with our Rocket plants. I'm so glad I got all of those seeds in the ground and the tomatoes propagated. I'm feeling, I'm feeling really good about growing food this season and I'm hoping that this beautiful garden can be really productive. Got all the lorikeets in the background because the bottle brush is flowering right now and the smell of the bottle brush as well is just so beautiful and sweet and I wouldn't actually mind making some like infused water with the bottle brush flowers which I've seen a lot of people do but yeah that was totally off topic to <laughs> planting seeds and everything but uh yeah I'm just really happy to be outside and feeling warm, feeling good, feeling productive. But yeah, I might wrap this video up here. Yeah, I really do want to change my mind frame this year about growing food. And I know like it does seem like I'm planting a lot, uh, but in my mind, I am only planting the things that are necessary to our diet, things that we really depend on and things that we would like to grow. And also trying in a few different varieties there with the tomatoes because always need to have fun in the garden and always need to be growing things that make us excited to get outside so that growing food doesn't become this chore that we have to do it's just something that we want to do and brings us joy so i would love to know what are you planting in your garden that are necessities for you that you always really want to have in the garden every year and what's something this year or something that you have tried this year that was a little bit different that surprised you and made you happy for me it's definitely some of those tomato varieties like the smaller patio style tomatoes in the pots I just think they're going to be super cool and look really awesome on my balcony. But thank you so much for joining me in the garden today, planting some seeds, just getting outside in the fresh air. If you did enjoy this video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe for lots more content. Any kind of interaction with these videos, whether it's liking, commenting or subscribing, really does help my channel out so, so much. And I am forever grateful for all of you for watching my videos and supporting me. And I love seeing all the regulars comment down below. We are creating such a beautiful community here, which I just love, so thank you. Goodbye, Loki.
off they go to the next tree. <laughs> All right, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you're having a lovely day wherever you are in the world. And until my next video, happy gardening, everyone. Bye.